This is Shubhishesh. We will be starting today with tonsillectomy instruments. Now, the, by tonsillectomy instruments, we mean the instruments that we use for the operation by dissection and snare method. Again, repeating the operation by dissection and snare method. There are other methods of tonsillectomy operations, but the instruments for our lab purpose is used, uh, are only confined to dissection and snare method. Now, first before going to the instruments, I would like to say a few words about the tonsillectomy operation, how is it done and why should we do it. And so, for the tonsillectomy operation, how is it done is first we have to uh, have uh, some certain indications that is for tonsillectomy. So, again indications for getting good marks in viva we have to say like this there are some absolute and some relative indications and so the absolute indications for tonsillectomy surgery are recurrent infections of the throat two peritonsillar abscess three tonsillitis causing febrile seizures and four if any malignancy is suspected also it can be done when a tonsil becomes so enlarged that it causes OAC. By OAC, we mean obstructive sleep apnea. And also, when it is preferred when there is a blockage in deglutition due to an abnormal size. Uh, these are the absolute indications of tonsillectomy, whereas the relative indications are in diphtheria carriers who do not respond to antibiotics some streptococcal carriers, some chronic tonsillitis patients having a halitosis or a bad taste. By halitosis, we mean bad breath. The, this is done in these relative indications when it is not managed by medical treatment, that is pharmacological treatment. Also, it can be done as a part of another operation such as palatopharyngoplasty or glossopharyngeal neurectomy. Now, coming to the operation part, we have, uh, we usually use general anesthesia in this case with endotracheal intubation. The position is the most characteristic one. That is, it is named after the flower which we use for proposal, that is the rose position. The Rose position is a characteristic position in which the neck is extended by keeping a sandbag under the shoulder and tilting the head backwards such that the whole of the trachea larynx are in a fully complete straight line and also the head is rest, uh, supported on a ring. This is the characteristic picture. Uh, now again, this becomes a straight line. And for this, there, uh, as, the, as this is a straight, straight line, as it is a straight line, there is no, virtually no aspiration of blood or secretions which can occur during the process of surgery. And so, this is a good uh, good position and also it helps the surgeon's hands to get free as the head is tilted down the mouth gradually opens up and also the space enlarges for the surgery and third uh, third importance of this uh, or advantage of this rose position is it helps in proper application of the boyle's davis mouth gag now what is boyle's davis mouth gag now Coming to Boyle's Davis mouth gag. Uh, coming to Boyle's Davis mouth gag, it looks like this. So, this is a complete set of Boyle's Davis mouth gag where the uh, gag is already attached to the, where the gag is already attached to the tongue blades 
that is the uh, boils david's mouth gag consists of two parts the first part is the boils tongue blade this is the boils tongue blade and this is the david's mouth gag these are these two are attached because the tongue blades are again used for a second second uh, application that is when in the drefens drefens bipod stand is used we used uh, we used to hang the tongue blades from there so the boils is mouth gag can be separated into two parts it that is it consists of two parts the boils tongue blade and the davis mouth gag now as we can see here 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 this is the one end of the bipod the drafting bipod the other end of the drafting bipod and the tongue blade is hanging from here and this is the boils boils tongue blade and the davis gag now now that uh, the instrument that i was talking about was drafens bipod the drafens bipod is usually drafens bipod is usually uh, put on a magaron's plate and therefore it is held tightly and therefore it can support it we can use any of the rings according to the head circumference of the patient we can use any of the rings to criss cross of the four rings present in the drafens bipod stand and then and then coming to the original picture from where we started is the rose's position the rose position the, the rose position has again another good advantage the as the surgeon can sit in front of the head of the patient and do the surgery then we go towards the next instrument the drafens bipod i've already said now some points i have missed about balls davis mouth gag is that uh, the uses of balls davis mouth gag are not only tonsillectomy it can be used also for adenoidectomy third for cleft palate surgery fourth for uvulo palatopharyngeoplasty again the four uses of boils davis mouth gag is tonsillectomy adenoidectomy cleft palate surgery and uvulo palatopharyngeoplasty the two components i have said before is davis mouth gag and boils tongue blade the tongue blades the function of the tongue blade is to pull or push the tongue upwards and away from the operation site whereas the davis gag uses uh, the red rubber catheter with the red rubber catheter to prevent injury to the teeth now now coming to the drafens bipod the drafens bipod is is has two pods with four rings each and is used to fix boils davis mouth gag the lower end of each pod is placed in one of the holes of magaron stand and the position in tonsillectomy there is a rose position is uh, therefore uh, is essential for the drafens bipod to act the pic i showed before the rose in the patient is in the rose position patient is in the rose position the drafens by the drafens bipod is attached the boil davis mouth gag is attached the teeth are separated the teeth are separated the tongue is flattened out and we have the complete view of the tonsillar fossa from here now the thing that we uh, potential mcq from this part which had which had come in neat pg 2012 was that what is the side effect or the adverse effect of this rose position apart from many advantages is if we if it is done by clerical hands then it will cause overextension of the neck 
leading to a syndrome called Grizzel syndrome where it causes an atlantoaxial subluxation that is a C1 and C2 subluxation. It is not given in books, so please remember it. Now coming to the next instrument in our case is the, the Nagan's tonsillar artery forceps. It can be easily identified because of the straight handles and the curved end. Now things that we have to know to in this tonsillectomy surgery is that the tonsil is highly vascular. It can cause it can cause a massive bleeding in during surgery. So to control the bleeding during surgery, we use particularly three instruments. Not only the Nagan's tonsillar artery forceps, which will be uh, which will be shown in the practical lab or the OT the theater. We usually use three instruments. That is, uh, one is Burkett straight artery forceps, one is Nagus knot tire, and the third one is Nagus tonsillar artery forceps or the curved artery forceps. Okay, again repeating, the three instruments to control bleeding during tonsillectomy surgery are Barkett's straight artery forceps, Nagus curved artery forceps and Nagus knot tire. Now coming to the next instrument is a very simple one. This is called Dennis Brown's tonsil holding forceps. Now the Dennis Brown's tonsil holding forceps can, can be easily identified by the 120 degree angle between the blades it is approximately 120 degree the 120 degree angle between the blades and the hold holders and also the blades being ring like and uh, comes one above another this fashion it is ring like and comes one above another. So, the uh, so there is an important point of difference that is asked in exams. That is, how can we differentiate it from Lux forceps? The Lux forceps uh, is usually not shown, but but uh, is asked because in uh, Dennis Brown's tonsil holding forceps. There, there is a joint that we call a box joint. The box joint is this joint, this one. The box joint is uh, uh, present in this instrument such, so that it gives less, less pressure to the tonsil. When we are holding the tonsil, it gives less pressure to the tonsil. And the the angulature of the Dennis Brown's tonsil holding forceps helps to hold the tonsil and pull it medially, which is not, which cannot be done by Lux forceps, LUC. Edges of, and also the in Dennis Brown's forceps, tonsil holding forceps, the edges of the tip are blunt and so cannot cut the tissue, whereas in Lux, the edges are sharp and can cut the tissue. And also the upper jaw is relatively smaller than the lower jaw. As I have drawn here, upper jaw, upper jaw is relatively smaller than the lower jaw. This characteristic is the characteristics of Dennis Brown's the Dennis Brown's tonsil holding forceps. Now coming to the next one. The most important instrument and a potential MCQ is the St. Clair Thompson Aronaut Curette with Guard. Now as I have said it is an Aronaut Curette with Guard. So it is consists of two parts a curette, this is the curette and this is the guard. 
the both are attached and we have the Sinclair Thompson's adenoid curate with guard and so the uses of this is comes from the name itself it is used for adenoidectomy and not for tonsillectomy specific tonsillectomy adenoid are part of the nasopharyngeal tonsils I know that the curette, the function of the curette is to remove the adenoid tissue whereas the guard holds the tissue and does not allow it to slip. The curette is held in right hand in dagger holding fashion. Remember the thing, the dagger holding fashion. Dagger holding fashion. The dagger holding fashion. Now, some things that we should know. We should always palpate adenoid before surgery, such that we should uh, confirm the diagnosis by irregular feel on palpation, that is the bag of worms feel. It is a characteristic question that is asked, what is the feel? It is a bag of worms feel. And it could, as it could have been not the adenoid, uh, adenoid in a uh, diseased, it could be an encephalocele, which is a differential diagnosis in this case. And also, to rule out any artery passing through the surface of the adenoid. For in this case, if you use the St. Clair Thompson adenoid curate without palpation, and if there is an ad artery passing through the surface of the adenoid, there will be massive hemorrhage intraoperatively, and which cannot be controlled using the bleed Ble uh, bleeding management of Burkett, Negus and not tires. Now coming to the next instrument, we have the tonsil dissector and the knife. Now this end is the knife and this is the dissector. As I have clearly shown here in this diagram, this is the dissector and this is the knife. So the knife usually cuts the to end, tonsillar end and the dissector is used to pull it. The next instrument is a characteristic one. It is the tonsil dissector and anterior pillar retractor. Now, as we know, the tonsillar fossa is a fossa between anterior and posterior pillars where the tonsil present like this, anterior pillar and a posterior pillar. So, this is the anterior tonsil dissector and anterior pillar retractor. This is a blunt type of knife, also called a dissector type like this. this dissector and this is the retractor which used to retract the anterior pillar. We use, usually do the retraction to see if there is any tonsillar tissue left after surgery. The dissector end is to dissect tonsil from the tonsillar fossa. Now coming to the all the instruments previously said in a short diagram. Hmm. Now this instrument I have not yet told you about is a relatively less asked instrument. This is the Van Cure suction tube is used to it is used connected with a suction machine and used to connect the remaining blood and other other ton, tonsillectomy uh, ton, tonsillar remnants and also it can be used for incision in for incision uh, given in mucous membrane and also sometimes small dissection of the tonsils. Now, 
the tonsillar artery forceps as we have previously seen the Draffin's bipod and also the Draffin's bipod and the Magaron strand not uh, seen here and the Boyle's Davis mouth gag this is the tonsil dissector and antiripular detractor the tonsil dissector and knife the Boyle's Davis mouth gag uh, it is usually the it is the not the complete set it is only the tongue blade of boil that is a boil's tongue blade this is the st clair thompson's adenoid curate with guard and the dennis brown's tonsil holding forceps now this is the view of all the things that we use in ot it's characteristically you can see it we have the kidney in uh, kidney tree uh, containing the knife the tooth and non tooth works forceps we have the tonsil holding forceps that is the dennis browns we have the tonsil dissector and the anterior retractor we have lux and lux and nigus artery forceps we use sometimes use some snares we have boyle's davis mouth gags we have uh we have the tonsil dissector forceps wogs tonsil dissection forceps with teeth all the teeth and also the vancouver suction tube and also the some gauges some tissues etc now coming to coming to the slide where we can see the cutting yes this one this is this is the dennis brown tonsil holding forceps dennis brown holding the tonsils and we are using the snare to cut it now this part we will discuss in a different video as it will get too long and people won't watch it and these parts are usually asked for mcqs and not for prof purposes and thank you have a great day